Yo, what up? It's Project, and with only four days away from release, I figured I'd share my build plan for my first run and give some optimized stat spreads for popular build archetypes so you guys can pick the right class for you and start your builds off the right way day one. If you're a brand new player to Souls and the Elden Ring is going to pop that cherry, then make sure to check out my new player guide to prepare you for Elden Ring, and the link will be in the comments. There will be no spoilers this video, maybe a couple PvP clips, but that's it. Likes on this video are appreciated, so let's start with my build first, but if you don't care for that, you can just skip right ahead and use the navigation timestamps to get what you want faster. Efficiency. Perfection. But my plan for Elden Ring is to make it not seem like Dark Souls 3 as much as possible. Since I never played DS2, I do want to do power stance, and you guys know me, I like Jeez. Jeez. and Neo. So I'm also going to be using Spirit Summons often. I'm going to be doing Posture Attacks often, using Ashes of War often, and because I usually always go quality for my starting Souls games, this time I want to go sort of hybrid for the stats. As far as weapons, I am going to run dual katanas. I did like Onikiri and Ubudachi a lot from DS3, so that's the power couple I want to imitate. The problem is, I also want to pump faith for Fireomancy-like spells and heals. So as you can see, I'm kind of spreading myself thin here. Initially, I was going to go sort of Dark Moon double buff katana equivalent, but now I'm kind of second guessing myself as Power Stance didn't seem that great in my CNT experience and based off others' opinions as well. I'll talk about Power Stance after release as we don't know if things changed, but it doesn't seem as good as DS2 as you don't seem to gain much damage, if at all, with the trade-off being it no longer doubling the stat requirements of both weapons. But that's based off plus 3 weapons, who knows how the damage difference is with plus 10. But in saying that, you also gotta upgrade two weapons instead of one, which may be slower to progress than a sword and board build. The one potential saving grace, aside looking like a badass, is the fact that you hit twice. Even if damage is not increased much, this may be good for status buildup weapons, so bleed, poison, sleep, and frostbite, if their application rate is also not diluted from power stancing. Generally, these effects suck, except bleed, but we know sleep is pretty decent in Elder Ring. However, in the case of Bleed and Poison, those scale with Arcane, so I don't know if I'll have to upgrade Arcane to be effective, or if a Bleed Risen or buff from some sorts can be enough, or perhaps I can just go hybrid scaling and drop decks and just pump Endurance for a Power Stancing Giant Dad. Oh wait, Poise is useless in PvE, oops, so we'll have to see when I stream the playthrough here on YouTube launch night. But because of all that, I will be going Samurai, and this planner will be linked down in the description below. Samurai is basically a one point difference from Vagabond, except you start with a katana and bow. So it'll get me closer to power stancing cats faster than Vag, and be as optimal as well. Now a couple things. Mind might be something you have to invest in if you plan to utilize summons. In this CNT, I picked Bloody Wolf, which is no longer a class, but the base mind stat wasn't enough to summon a certain spirit, which I imagine might be the case for more powerful spirits later on in the game. Spirits are upgraded through another means, they don't scale with mine, so you don't need to raise it too high, but I want to be able to use spirits and spam Ashes of War and have enough room for faith junk, so that's why I'm taking more mine than a quality build would. Likewise, with Equip Blow being tied to Endurance, you have to keep in mind that too, if you are going to power stance big weapons, those weapons will add to your weight total, so it's also going to be harder to power stance early on without some endurance investment. So power stancers, lighter weapons are going to be better early on, but later on heavies will catch up for the big bonks. So that's the build I plan to run on my first go, power stance katanas. These stats are just targets to aim for, which I might change mid-playing, so don't think you're locked into a spread just because of the targeted stats. And remember, respec exists. You won't change your class, but you will be able to reassign your stats later in the game. So next I'll show some optimized spreads for some popular archetypes, but first, just know that all classes are equal stat-wise if you level all stats equally. So if you only play these games once and just high level your character as high as possible in New Game Plus 7 or whatever, the class you pick is going to be irrelevant later on. Just FYI if you didn't know. However, that is an interesting point. I don't think people should be going to 120 just yet. 
120 is usually what the meta might settle into, but the first month-ish, you'll be hurting your invasions or co-op by going that high. Chances are people will finish the game around so level 60 to 90, so that is the hot spot range for activity the first week or two. 120 is basically mainly for like duels or to invade new game plus guys, and in this game, well, let's just say I've seen some things accidentally that might raise the meta beyond 120. Things exceeding previous limits casters so while i will present 125s to show you what's most stat efficient at that level you do want to stay in that 60 to 90 bracket for your first week or two for higher co-op and invasion rate so starting off with a quality build is vagabond slash samurai giving you these stats with six flex stats in case there's a sort of tears of denial or some other buff you can dump into faith or int for this build is basically the most well-rounded if you want to dabble into either strength or dex weapons and well kind of ignore spell stuff although the class itself vagabond or samurai is on the cusp of being the best for hybrid builds as well depending on the strength or dex you need so if you pick it your options are immense compared to every other class if you're new and wondering why we stop at 40 it's because that's the soft or hard cap where points into these stats afterwards have severe diminishing returns and thus aren't worth pumping up beyond that and because of that this game is super easy to make builds for because they're just not on the level of complexity as neo or path of exile or even monster hunter so if there's one thing not hard about Souls games, it's the stats and builds. <laughs> but yeah, next builds, pure casters, meaning pure Into or pure Feito. Starting with caster, Astrologer will be best if the weapon requirements aren't too high. Otherwise, Prisoner and Vagabond become competitive. For you guys, your damage stat is the most important. Especially since the world is much bigger, you'll be able to space yourself and basically backpedal when fighting to likely not get hit much at all. Easy mode. For these, you will want an Ash of War that scales your weapon into intelligence or faith on your weapon. I don't believe raw scaling exists like it did in DS3, so early on, pure casters melee you will be rather weak. So just a warning there. And spells do cost stamina to cast as well as FP, so you do want some endurance to be able to cast and have enough stam to dodge an attack. And while dex does increase casting speed, there's usually a ring or talisman that can achieve the same thing and save you a ton of points and... And well honestly, I don't think pure casters can afford to go dex anymore without eating life or mine, not like anyone did in DS3 anyways. For a pure faith build, Prophet is ideal if you don't need any decks. If you do, Vaga is ironically the best for faith. Next, for strength bros, Hero is the best if you neglect every other stat but strength, vigor, and endurance, the only three you need. Much simpler to build than the other classes, however, I foresee you being weak at the start since you won't have access to those crazy big or ultra weapons yet, nor will you have super chunky armor, but that likely means you can just pump Vig higher early on than other classes, so there's that to counter that negative. And lastly, hybrids. Again, these are harder to build and will be more annoying early on to level, but I foresee these being among the strongest in the game, given how decked out spells and incantations are, and you can take advantage of the posture system, unlike pure casters. For this one though, it'll be a play by ear for you. You might need more mind, you might need more endurance or strength or dex, who knows. It depends on the weapons that you want to use, but you get the gist of the stats. Just go to 40, 41 for your highest stat. Prophet is ironically the best paladin class, as I said in my class overview video, since going strength plus faith is more effective than going strength plus int. But the reverse is true. Going dex plus int is better than dex plus faith, where astrologer is peak, but Prisoner is best if you need a smidge of strength, but only by one point, so to be honest, I would go Astrologer in case you want to make both a pure caster and hybrid on one character. And for Paladin, it's a 2-to-level two two difference between Prophet and Vagabond, depending if you need Dex or not. Arcane? Mm, I don't trust Arcane totally yet, so wait till release to decide if you want to go that way, but seemingly, at the moment, it's pretty useless. Now, for those picking Wretch because an influencer told you to, I'd advised against it. 
Maybe I'm a purist, but in my opinion, Wretch, the deprived class, can only be so level one, can only be naked. As soon as you raise its level or put on a piece of gear, you're no longer a true wretch. You're a phony. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. If you want to live out that fantasy of slowly building up your character, literally pick Vagabond and unequip all your gear as soon as you spawn in the game. Not only will you have the same bare ass, but you won't even have a club to kill enemies with even more Chad-like. And you get gear in like the first three minutes of starting, and Vagabond uses a longsword, which is as basic as it gets, and something you'd throw away for pretty much anything else cooler. So it's a misconception you're gonna stick with the starting weapons even an hour in. If freedom of stats to go into any build is the excuse, you're wrong picking Wretch as well. Vagabond is among the best classes to have flexibility to go into any archetype, be it melee, hybrid, or even pure casters as shown, and still be more optimal than Wretch at 90 and 125 and beyond. That is the reason his sword is not straight. Flexibility. Oh yeah. So Wretch is a meme class, made for challenge runs. With Vagabond, you can turn that character, all that playtime you'll be doing on your first playthrough, to something meaningful for multiplayer by the end once you do decide your build, be it for co-op or PvP. Sure, your first playthrough will never be optimal, but since respec is in the game, you can turn that character into an optimal character eventually. You can't with Wretch, because your class is locked. And as I said earlier, all classes end up the same if you leveled all stats evenly past 16. So Wretch has no advantage. Oh, wait a minute. That sounds kind of fun. Oh wait, no, no, don't get influenced, no. <laughs> Pick Wretch if you're going to do it from the start, but if you're bandwagoning, I'm just saying, you're wasting a 50 plus hour character down the drain for nothing. Perhaps that is why it's called a waste of skin. Damn it. I just influenced you to pick it again with that last line, didn't I? Fuck. My bad. Get influenced. <laughs> but anyways, those are my build suggestions before release. Even if we won't know what the gear or spell requirements will be, statistically, the builds I mentioned will still be the most optimal regardless of that fact. In worst case, there's respec. In worst, worst case, all builds are even if you leveled every stat evenly. As far as starting gifts you will get during the character creation, you want to pick Golden Seed, the Keys, or the HP Talisman. Personally, I'm going to go for the Stone Keys, however, I suggest not going to that locked area just yet unless you're super hardcore. I would at least come back with a plus two to three weapon and then try, as the area it unlocks within the tutorial area is pretty hard. Like, you're on the leveled hard, so to be efficient, come back later to reap your spoils. So, hope the video was helpful to you guys upon release or helps you finally know what you plan to do instead of spamming Reddit about what class to pick. But that's all from me, only a few days left. Slam that like button if you're excited for Elden Ring! Comment down below which class or build you're gonna run with. Any power stancers? Question mark? I'm gonna be dedicating a lot of videos to the series, weeks, months. So if you want a channel with lots of build videos and stuff like that, subscribe and hit the noti for more! Elden Ring epicness.